Would you like to know your rights, gain more constitutional knowledge than 99% of Americans? Would you like to learn tangible action steps to preserve liberty and defend freedom? Would you like to learn biblical and constitutional and historical foundations of freedom? Then join us here at FUMC for a six-week Constitution Alive course with America's Constitution coach, Rick Green. We'll meet every Wednesday night here at the church from 6 to 8 p.m. starting March the 31st, running through May the 5th. Sign up with Christy Wooten and be sure to include any family members that would like to take the course. Teenagers are indeed welcomed. One workbook per family will be provided by the church and any additional workbooks that you would like to purchase can be purchased through me and Patriot Academy. This is gonna be an entertaining and inspiring and an educational course and we hope to see you there. Good morning, it's Palm Sunday and welcome to the Florida United Methodist Church. We're about to celebrate Jesus in a big way right behind you, right where you're watching. We're going to go into the sanctuary in just a minute, and we're so glad you're here as we kick off our week, our Holy Week celebrations. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. I hope you'll be here. Many of you have been vaccinated or you have already had the COVID, and you feel confident to get out and mill about, and we just can't wait to see you back in church. If you can't be with us next week, then join us right here on this channel and we'll celebrate the resurrection of our Lord together, Easter Sunday. Friends, we are so blessed and we are going to make His praise glorious. That's what the Word says, make His praise glorious. We are told to do that in Scripture and we do that the best we can. If it's a joyful noise, it's a joyful noise. But we raise our voices, we raise our hands, we raise our songs, we lift our Lord in praise. I'm so glad that you're here. Friends, we're going to have uh, a Seder meal this week, and perhaps you already know about that. On Wednesday, we have uh, a civics class where we're doing the Patriot Academy's uh, teaching on the the framers of our Constitution, and it's a video conference from Constitution Hall in Philadelphia. And so it's a wonderful setting, and we'll have it here on video. We hope you can come to that. That begins this Wednesday. And, uh, of course, what a celebration next Sunday for Resurrection Sunday Easter. So, friends, welcome. We're going to go right into the sanctuary. We're going to lift our voices in praise. So y'all join me. Let's go together. Let's praise the Lord. wonderful tradition Palm Sunday is and on Sunday mornings the children come in waving the palm branches and my goodness we've been doing that for so long and so I'm going to read the 
Palm Sunday passages. You get them in the Gospels and, and all of the Gospels. And so last year, I think, as we were just getting our video ministry started as the COVID started before Easter. And so last year on Palm Sunday, we used Luke's Gospel, Luke uh, chapter 19, I believe. This year, we're using Matthew. You know we've been doing the biographies of Jesus in, in chronological order the best we can, but now we're just going to have to jump way ahead all the way to Matthew chapter 21. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Listen, friends, this, this week you're going to get a, a mailing from us, and we have just such a lovely a lovely and very powerful, very powerful gift that's coming to you in the mail this week. It's going to be the gift for April and May in this mailing. And when you get it, you'll instantly understand why and, uh, and, and what, we're, what, what we're teaching. And if you've been paying attention the last several Sundays, you know, you know the, the power in this particular gift. It's, it's really just a a tremendous idea, and it is, we just all, went all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, and we move right through the scripture and to, to Jesus' own teaching about his own death, and you will receive that gift this week in the mail. If you don't get it, let me know. It's just a, a powerful, it's a, it's a very tiny, powerful gift we have for you. And so we're so blessed for you to get it. Friends, we are in Matthew chapter 21, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem just a week before his betrayal and his death. Let's begin with verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, we've been there so many times, it's a beautiful, I just, you, you go there and you're just, you're just, you're in heaven. Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you about this, the owner, for example, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. And this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet say to the daughter of Zion see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey and he's quoting there from Isaiah and the disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them they brought the donkey and the colt placed their cloaks on them and Jesus sat on them I preached on this that just that portion of it last fall, and so I won't spend any time. Let's let's continue reading the the uh, the story. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowd that went ahead of him shouted, and those who followed him shouted, "Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes." In the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Remember, Jesus did most of his ministry in the region of the Galilee, up, up by the Sea of Galilee. And so he's still not that famous there in Jerusalem. And the crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple area. And he drove out all those who were buying and selling there. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling the doves. For it is written, he says, quoting again the, the Old Testament, It is written, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. And, and so he's sprinkling a lot of Old Testament prophecies from the Psalms to Jeremiah to to Isaiah, he's, he's, we see this is fulfilling a lot of Old Testament prophecies. And the blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, 
And the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant. They were outraged. They became angry. Do you hear what these children are saying, they asked him? Yes, replied Jesus. I hear what they're saying. Have you never read, and again, he quotes the Old Testament, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, just a couple of miles away, where he spent the night with Mary and Martha and Lazarus, whom he had just raised from the dead just a week or ten days before then. I love Palm Sunday. It is absolutely my favorite Sunday of the year. Of course, Easter is the biggest, is the biggest celebration in the history of humanity that ever was, is, or ever will be. Tom Brady could win a hundred Super Bowls and it would not touch the glory of this, right? Uh, he's, Tom Brady is the GOAT. That's a term I, I'm not even familiar with. I heard it the last couple of years, the GOAT, greatest of all time. <laughs> yeah. When I was a kid, the GOAT was not what you wanted to be, but uh, here we are, and uh, the greatest of all time. But Jesus, Easter, but you know, I always feel sort of inadequate preaching on Easter. I just never feel like I can quite grasp or pr proclaim uh, the glory of our risen Lord in the way that, uh, that he deserves. And Palm Sunday is, is it's, a, it's the Sunday when we, when they gave, we, they gave Jesus the glory due him. Now, Rebecca pointed out last week just how fickle this, this crowd is. I mean, four days later, they're, they're yelling, crucify him, crucify him. But here, the city is abuzz with the glory of the Lord. And, 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 and all, you know, there's just a, a convergence of Old Testament uh, prophetic messages being fulfilled at, all in this, this uh, sweeping, wonderful moment. And, uh, and Jesus is really just affirming his, his status as Messiah. It's, it's, it's really him. It's true. The Gospels are true. The hope is true. Jesus is really Messiah. And they're just, they're just praising him. Hosanna, they said, which means save us or God save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Sandy Patty sang what I think is the ultimate uh, Palm Sunday song, uh, song. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it's, I guess she sang it, it must have been in the middle 80s or something. And, 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 and the song Sandy sings, the crowds lined the narrow streets to see the man from Galilee. Just a carpenter, some say, leading fools astray. Yet many kneel to give him praise. The praise that was due him. And on Palm Sunday, we exalt the Lord. We exalt him by faith for what he's going to do for us in this week that we call Holy Week. We'll have a, a Seder meal in our church this week, and, uh, and we will reenact. We're doing the whole meal this year, not just the communion part of it, but the, 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 the last of the four cups and the, and the bread, but all four cups and, and the meal, the shank bone, all of that, the salt water, the the bitter herbs, the parsley, uh, the egg, you know, so many, that's just, that whole thing was just pregnant with meaning, and the disciples were there, and, 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 and Jews had been celebrating this for 1,500 years. Imagine that, 1,500 years since Moses instituted the Passover feast, the Seder meal, 
And now Jesus becomes the fulfillment of all of that, all of that, the unleavened bread, all of that is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And, and we just know, and, and on Palm Sunday, we just know by faith that he truly is who he said he was. And, and, they're, and they're praising him. And they have no idea the horror that lies before them. But they praise him because he is due the praise. It's, it's a wonderful thing laying the cloaks down and the palm branches and, and all of those things. And, and the people at uh, what Carl, our, our worship leader, calls the head shed. <laughs> That's uh, where the bosses live. And the people at the head shed, they're just mystified. They're jealous. C could I tell you that the whole that the, the whole conspiracy against Jesus is rooted in jealousy? It just is. You know, they just, Jesus is being praised, and they just don't like that at all. And jealousy is such an unbecoming uh, sin. It's rooted in insecurity and vanity. And the, and the jealous person just, they know that Jesus has got something that they don't have. Boy, they can, they can really talk the talk, but they couldn't walk the walk. You remember the Pharisees? They just dressed themselves up. And can I tell you that the weaker the church becomes, y'all, just forgive me. I, you bet, Just cut off the camera. Don't even... Don't even listen to what I'm about to say. Y'all just close it off. You don't want to hear what I'm about to say. So I'll just give you a minute just to cut it off, and, and maybe we'll try again next week. Uh, <laughs> can I tell you something? The weaker the church becomes, the more ornate the pastor's costumes become. Yeah, costumes. Yeah. The, the weaker the pastors become, the more clownish their vestments look. They're covering something, friends. Can I tell you that that's the world that turned on Jesus? You see, it wasn't the people. It wasn't Jewish people. Some people tried, you know, they... they there was a great backlash against Mel Gibson's movie because they said Mel Gibson's movie was anti-Semitic. Of course it wasn't. And the Jews that turned on Jesus and betrayed him uh, were not the everyday... His 11 of his 12 disciples stayed with him. And they were all Jewish. And the Jewish people stayed with him. And Jesus himself is the king of the Jews. So the Gospels are not anti-Semitic. It's the Jewish leaders, those white washed sepulchers that Jesus called them. They became indignant. They just couldn't believe that Jesus was getting all of this glory. They were just so, so uh, jealous, just ridiculously jealous of Jesus. And you know, friends... Uh, it threatened their livelihoods. It threatened their, their status in the community. You know, they've been preaching in church for years and never saw a miracle. Caiaphas been preaching for 40 years, never saw a miracle. Jesus walks in and heals every one of them. <laughs> you know, why can't, why couldn't they be happy? Jesus walks into a synagogue. There's a woman bit double. She was arthritis in her spine and Jesus looks at this woman and says, it's not right that this daughter of Abraham suffer like this. And he healed her. Why couldn't they be happy for that woman? Why did they have to be so threatened? They got so angry that Jesus was doing good things for people. Because they knew they couldn't do good things for people. And Jesus said they wore these fancy robes. But they were nothing on the inside. 
Oh, my friends, the glory, the glory is due Jesus. We, uh, we glorify politicians and we glorify athletes and, and we glorify actors and actresses. When is the last time that you watched the Academy Awards, the Grammys, the Golden Globes, the Tonys, or People's Choice Awards, all those kind of shows? You know, people, we used to tune in to watch those. Haven't watched them in years. The self-congratulatory, pompous uh, actors and actresses feeling so important, so rich, so driving up in limousines and getting out on the red carpet and, and oh, who are they wearing today? Oh, this is this one she's wearing uh, Versace and this other one's wearing Gucci and this other one's wearing... How do you guys think of me pulling up? <laughs> pulling up. Pulling up in my, in my little car and getting out and said, oh, there's Scott. He's wearing J.C. Penney's. <laughs> He's wearing, he's wearing Payless tennis shoes, you know, and it's just that whole, that whole thing is so vain, and that's the world that we live in, and that's the world that Jesus lives in, and we just give glory to the most inglorious things and the most inglorious people. Can I tell you, there's one, there is one, and there is just one who is worthy of our honor and our praise. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you, he is due our praise. And there's, there's kind of a, a, a last thing. I know I read an extended passage of Scripture and and I, we used Matthew's gospel this year. Last year we used Luke. Luke, I love because it has the story. It, it, it's the only one of the gospels that includes when the, when the Pharisees told Jesus to make his people, make the people shut up. Make them quit praising you. And Jesus looks at, the, looks at them and he says, look, if, if these people don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. That's, that's an interesting, isn't it? I, I, I preached on that last week. I won't, I mean, last year. I won't re preach it. But, but you know, the Bible says the whole earth groans. All of creation groans under the burden of sin. But all of creation glorifies Jesus in his power and his resurrection. The Isaiah said, the trees of the fields will clap their hands. The mountains will birth forth with praise. But Matthew here, he quotes a scripture from the Old Testament. It's really good. And, uh, and it's, where I want, it's where I want to end this morning. He said that in, in the little children, God has ordained praise that's just really amazing you remember the little children came to Jesus one day and you know Mark's gospel has two accounts in chapter 9 and chapter 10 about this and and uh, remember the, uh, the the Jesus disciples not the Pharisees that the villains and, the, and all the stories but his own disciples told the children to to shoo 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 Get away from him. Get away. Get away. And Jesus said, no, no, no. He takes a little child and he, theologians call this the hug a child test. And Jesus picks up the little child and he hugs him. He said, do you want to accept the kingdom? you want to receive the kingdom? You do it like this, like you receive this child. And there's two chapters in Mark, back to back, that include accounts of Jesus' encounters with children. I, I, I think about this. I there was a singing Christmas tree in a church near where we lived when I was a pastor many, many years ago, 30 years ago, I guess. And I was out of town, and uh, Sue Ellen took 
Mallory, who was about four or five years old, maybe six, kindergarten or first grade, to the singing Christmas tree of this local church. It wasn't the church I pastored. It was a different church, different denomination, but a fabulous church. And she walked into the church and uh, Sunday night or Wednesday night or something, singing Christmas tree sometime during Christmas. And, and the ushers met her at the door and said, uh, I'm sorry, you can't come in. And she said, what do you mean I can't come in? And she said, we don't, he said, we don't allow little children to come into our performances. And she said, you're singing Christmas tree? <laughs> you don't allow children in the room? And they said, no, you can't come in here. And Sue Ellen says, well, they, they're too noisy. And, and so Sue Ellen says, well, she'll sit quietly. And Sue Ellen took a step toward the door. Because, you know, she's, I know y'all think Sue Ellen's just as quiet and, and sweet and all that. And she is, but, uh, but she's also the mama bear. <laughs> and she takes a step toward the door. And the usher, or, or should I say husher, grabs her and pushes her out the door. Says, nope, you ain't getting in here with that kid. Christmas. Christmas service. You know, there's not a Christmas service without a baby. Well, I came home. I was traveling. I came home and so Ellen told me about it and she said, he physically removed me from the building. So the next day, uh, my, little, my little bride gets on the phone and calls the church. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about Sue Ellen, that one that's sitting right back there. She calls the church and she says, and she talks to the pastor and she says, you know, I tried to come to church last night and the, for the singing Christmas tree, to celebrate Christmas, we don't have anything in our church, and so I came to your church, and your your deacons pushed me out the door, and he said, the preacher said to her, "Well, we just learned," he said. Uh, he said, "One year during my solo, this is the preacher. One year during my solo in the singing Christmas tree, the church that was famous for their singing Christmas tree." Not in Flora. This was years ago, not, not anywhere around here. Church famous for their singing Christmas tree. He said, one year during my solo, a baby started crying and ruined the whole thing. And so Sue Ellen said, so that's what it's about. Click. Isn't that just incredible? And you know, I'm a forgiving person. I don't hold a grudge. I can tell you that I don't hold a grudge. I don't hold a grudge against Tammy who's gotten on my last nerve. I don't hold a grudge against the other Tammy that has kissed me like Judas. I don't hold a grudge against Mike and Carl. and I can't stand either one of them. But I don't hold grudges. No, really, friends. I, don't, I, just, I don't hold grudges. But can I tell you that that's been 30 years. That was like 1991 or something. And that has stuck in my crawl all of those years. And here I am 30 years later telling you about it. But can I tell you that when, when the Bible declares, when Jesus declares that, that it is through the little children that God has ordained praise, he knows what he's talking about, friends. Little children don't come in here with their vanities. Little children don't come up, up here with their egos. Little children don't come into church and say, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Little children don't do that, friends. Their praise is from their hearts, and it's pure, and it's not encumbered with ego. Let me, let me end right here, friends. This is Palm Sunday. This is Holy Week. I, I, I charge you. This week, let's make his praise glorious. Amen and amen. I'll be right back to pray for you. Let 
the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my soul you are good you're good oh you are good you're good oh you are the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song let the king of my heart the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song you are good you're good oh you are good you're good oh you are good Amen and amen. Where'd, where'd the praise band go? I thought they all walked out on me. No, I'm teasing. They're here. Hey, friends, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that the, the power of Palm Sunday uh, resides uh, on you and in you this entire week. And as you go forward uh, from Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday and, and Good Friday, the ironically named Good Friday. It was so good. It was so good. Friends, we'll be in heaven a million years and we'll just then begin to understand how good Good Friday really is. 
all the way to Resurrection Sunday. So let, let me just pray for you. Lord, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for my, for my sweet friends, Lord, those who are watching us this morning and those who worship with us, Lord, and, and some in these other, other days besides Sunday morning that just tune in to, to worship with us. They tune in to hear the music or they tune in to, to uh, hear the message or are they just drawn to this program, Lord, to feed their souls? And Lord, all of us, every one of us, Lord, has, we've all felt the, the sting of religion. Pompous, religious people, Lord, pastors, deacons, church leaders who are just so abusive. Well, Jesus, he bore that. He bore it his entire life, but he certainly bore that the last week of his life or not. But he faced it, and he did it all for us. And he, he uh, is worthy of our praise. Lord, for those who are tuning in this morning who need some encouragement, Lord, just bless us, Lord, bless in Jesus' name. And Lord, for those who are tuning in this morning who need healing in their bodies, Lord, they just need a touch. Lord, they're not asking for millions of dollars. They're not asking for uh, mansions on a hill or, or uh, Lamborghinis. Lord, they, they're, they hurt in their bodies or their hearts are broken or their families are broken. Lord, I just ask you to just to touch them today, Lord. I ask you to bless today, I pray. Lord, for those who, who are just singing the blues, and Lord, they, they, they don't even know why. Lord, they're just tired. They're tired of the COVID. They're, they're tired of the division in our country. They're, they're tired of, uh, of anxiety that they feel anxiety they experience in everyday life. They're tired of their daily commutes. Lord, there are those who are watching this morning who have arthritis in their hands and, and they, they can't open their, their colas, they can't open a jar of pickles. and They're just tired of it. They just hurt. Lord, I pray for them. And I just ask you, Lord, just to release, Lord, your blessing. I, I think of uh, that last ride into Jerusalem as you, as you faith death, hell, and the grave. And, and uh, how you were received by the people. And, and the Bible says you, you went into the temple and you drove out the money changers and, and those who abused people. And you faced down the, uh, the Pharisees. And you healed the sick. Lord, there's, there's not a scripture anywhere in the Bible that is, that is more emblematic and representative of your heart toward hurting people as, the, as that, is that verse in this triumphant entry. Lord, where it says that you healed the people. And so, Lord, you're the same yesterday today and forever. So we ask you, sweet Jesus, one more time, heal your people. Just let the healing grace flow, Lord. I know some are down and some are despondent. And, but Lord, heal us physically, emotionally, spiritually, relationally. And yes, Lord, financially heal us we pray in the very strong in the very powerful name of Jesus Christ the Messiah the Lord Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord hallelujah 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 and amen friends share this video with somebody who needs to hear a good word there's a prayer list up here. Make sure you pray.
we got lots of things going on in our church. If you live in the area, come by and see us. We have a conference coming up in May. We have Resurrection Sunday, one week from today, and all kinds of things. Listen, we love you. I, I'm thinking about that. Since I, since I met Lave Halen a, a number of years ago, I think both Tammies were with me and others, and we met him in Lexington, Kentucky, and and uh, and uh, he reminds us all the time that he loves us, but that God loves us more. And so I've hung my hat on that. I love you. God loves you more. I will see you next Sunday, either right here in this building or on this camera. God bless. Mm -hmm.